Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Get ready to enjoy Jesus with us. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Get ready to enjoy Jesus with us. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Get ready to enjoy Jesus with us. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Get ready to enjoy Jesus with us. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Get ready to enjoy Jesus with us.
thank you for joining us for Live at the Cathedral. On behalf of Archbishop Robert Joel Rockford, we welcome you. Take this time to like, tag, and share this broadcast with your friends and family. It's time for worship. We're headed into our virtual sanctuary. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice. Come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on and magnify him. Come on, Shabbat.
You don't know. Somebody say, you don't know. You don't know what I have to go through. <laughs> You don't know what I've been through, but if you knew, you'll be praising him too. If you knew what I've been through, you would be praising too.
And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The desolation of many generations shall be built up. And the sons of foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Then shall they call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Well, God bless you and welcome to this time of worship, praise and adoration unto God. This is the year 2022, three twos in that number. And I believe this is the year for double, double for our shame as the scripture said, and in our land, in our lives, in our careers, in all that we do, in our ministries, we shall possess the double. Well, God bless all of you. Share this, like this, tag this, let others know new life is on the air. We're proclaiming the glory of God through the worship, through the word, and certainly through the witness of our lives. And I'm so grateful to have this opportunity on Super Bowl Sunday to talk about a super God who does super things, who is supernatural and can do anything but fail. His name is efficacious. His blood is efficacious. All power is in his hand. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. Right before I get into the word, I just want to make a few announcements. I want to thank God for all of our intercessors, along with Overseer Curtin and uh, Elder Desiree Callis and those who have been facilitating the prayers, all of the prayer warriors who have prayed and all of you who have joined in. 
things are beginning to trend down according to the governor. And uh, we believe God that as we keep praying, we're going to keep, excuse me, taking authority over the pandemic, over COVID, over Omicron, Delta, or whatever else rises. So let us keep praying at 12 noon. And then on Wednesday, we pray at seven. And then at 7.30, I have some guests coming on with me to talk about healthy relationships. This is the month of Valentine's uh, Day where we uh, celebrate our love for those that we love. And so I thought it would be fitting to have someone come on and talk about relationships. The relationships we're in will determine the quality of our future, but more importantly, the quality of our life. And so we wanna make sure that our relationships are strong, solid, and stable. That means they're healthy. And that will be this Wednesday night. Tell others about this, join in, and let's find out how we can relate to God, relate to others in a way that's healthy, and then our life be blessed beyond measure because the relationships in our life are what God intended them to be. I wanna call your attention to um, Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter, where I will begin to minister on this Super Sunday concerning to the word the Lord has given to me. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, I want to begin at verse 13. Here begins the reading of God's holy and eternal word. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell or Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should not tell no one that he was Jesus, the Christ. Verse 18, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell, or Hades, shall not prevail against it. I want to speak from this text, from the subject, the super church, the super church. As you know, this is Super Bowl Sunday and uh, Super Bowl Sunday is the most celebrated sports event of the year. During Super Bowl Sunday, when we have the Super Bowl this year, um, Cincinnati Bengals against the Los Angeles uh, Rams. And uh, this particular day is probably the most celebrated sports day of the entire year. It is estimated that this year will have its largest audience, the Super Bowl there will be 
15 million or more people watching throughout the world, because it's not just in America, but this thing takes place throughout the world, will be watching the Super Bowl as it relates to some of the things that will be going on because of the Super Bowl, it has been estimated that 31.4 million Americans will make a bet on the Super Bowl. And the money that they will bet will come to $7.6 billion. What could New Life do? with $7.6 billion. You're betting on a team that may not win and is coming up to $7.6 billion. What could we do in the kingdom of God if we had seven point? Now, if they're that intense and dedicated to the Super Bowl, how much more should we, as the people of God, who have a sure thing, we ain't betting, What we have is sure, be willing to give of our time, our treasure, and certainly our talent to the kingdom of God, because we're not betting we have a sure thing. As it comes to food now, uh, 1.25 billion chicken wings will be eaten during the Super Bowl. 51.7 million cases of beer and other beverages will be drank. 14 billion hamburgers will be eaten. 3.8 million pounds of popcorn. 139 million pounds of avocados. And 12 million slices of pizza. The Super Bowl. In fact, the only other day where more food is eaten is Thanksgiving. The Super Bowl is the most celebrated sports event of the year. But I want to show you how I believe football is a great metaphor for the church. Because our text deals with the super team called the church. That's why my subject is the super church. Football is a metaphor for the church. I want to show you how. Number one, it is a team sport. And Jesus in the text says, upon this rock, I build my church, ecclesia. It's made up of two words, ek, out of and kaleo to call. He's saying in this text, I'm calling this team together. I'm putting together this group of people that are going to be my team in the earth. And in fact, this team will help release and bring the kingdom of God in the earth. And that's why he says later in the text, I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth. He's speaking holistically to the church. If you bind something as my team on earth, heaven will back you up. If you loose something as my team on earth, heaven will back you up and whatever you bind will be bound. It will be held in check, but whatever you loose will be released because what the Lord is talking about here is not just any team. He talking about a dream team. You remember when uh, the Olympics was coming and in basketball, they were sending the college players, but the other countries were sending their pros and uh, the college players did well, but then they began to lose. So America said, if they're going to send their pro players, we're going to send ours. And they put together a dream team. You had Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Patrick Ewing, all of these superstar players they put together. And guess what? 
they didn't lose one game. Every game they played was a blowout. Well, the Lord said, my team that I'm putting together going to be a dream team. Nothing's going to be able to stop them. Nothing's going to be able to prevail over them. They're going to have so much power till even the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against my team. If you're on this team, you're a victor. If you're on this team, no matter what you're facing, you're going to come out on top. If you're on the Lord's team, the lion of Judah, shall break every fetter and give to us the victory again and again. I don't know if the Rams will beat Cincinnati. I don't know if Cincinnati will beat the Rams, but there is one thing I do know in the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, and the power of hell is diminished and destroyed because we are the super church. Now, I want you to see this. Every team has an owner. Every team has a general manager, and then every team has a head coach. As it relates to the church, the owner is the father. The scripture says in the Psalms, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, it all belongs to the father, father God. Now, the general manager, as we can see from this text, is Jesus because the general manager is the one who picks the players. He gets the, he makes the trades and, and puts the team together and gets the players. And Jesus said, I'm putting together this team. So he's the general manager. But the interesting thing is that with Jesus, he signs the players' names with his blood. It is through his blood that these players have become a part of this great team. Revelation says, I saw this great company of people that no one could number coming out from every nation and tribe in the entire world. And I asked, who was it? And they said, these are they who have come through great tribulation and they have washed their robes white in the blood of the lamb. They overcame the devil through the power of the blood. Jesus has picked the players and then he signs their names through his blood. And then you have the coach, the head coach. Now that's the Holy Ghost. Because uh, the comforter, Jesus said, I will send you another comforter, the spirit of truth. And the word comforter is uh, parakletos made up of two words, para, which means alongside, and again, kaleo, which means the call. He's one called alongside. I'm leaving you, but there's another comforter coming that's going to be along with you, alongside of you to comfort, to strengthen, to counsel, and help you get through whatever you're dealing with, whether it be pressure, pain, problem, or your past, you're going to have a coach because the coach comes alongside. You may never see the general manager. You may never see the owner, but the coach walks right alongside you to help you perfect everything about your game. In our case, everything about your life. Greater is he talking about the spirit that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's why we're such overcomers. That's why we have such victory because our coach is the power of the Holy Ghost and nothing can defeat the power of God. I love that song because God is the greatest power 
we shall never be defeated. So we see the owner, that's the father. We see the general manager. He has picked us, chosen us. Aren't you grateful that before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians, he chose us to be on his team. And because he chose us, he died for us. And he wrote our name in his blood. And then we have the coach that's walking right with us now. We are in partnership from the day of Pentecost. We are in partnership with the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to see this as we continue this metaphor of how uh, football compares to the church and compares to our spiritual life as we're dealing with this concept of the super church, the super church. Football is a massive, major, intense struggle. You got one team struggling to stop the other. And then you got another team struggling to go against that team and score and get to the goal line and score and beat that team. But it's intense. This isn't like tennis or golf or some other sport that's not that intense. I mean, these guys are going after each other. People are getting hurt. People are dealing with concussions. People are sometimes knocked out of the game. It, it, it's intense. I mean, uh, uh, these are 300 uh, uh, pound linebackers and, and defensive guys and coming after you to, to hit you and knock you down, not keep you from scoring, keep you from your goals. It is an intense struggle. And I want you to know that we as believers are in an intense struggle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. We are in a struggle. And it is an intense struggle because the lives that of those we love and the world and our own lives are at stake if we do not win this war. And we've got to be intentional and purposeful in understanding that the spiritual life of the believer is not a picnic. It's not a feast. It's a fight. It's not a banquet. It's a battle. The old ship of Zion is not a cruise ship. It's a battleship. We're in a fight. And if you'll note this in the football game, as we talk about this struggle, everything centers around the one who's carrying the football. When that guy gets that football and starts running, they forget about the quarterback. They forget about the other people. That defense comes against him to stop him and do all they can. And then the team who is on the side of the one who has the football tries to block and do things to let him progress. That football represents your destiny. That football represents the purpose of God for your life. That football represents the anointing that's on you. And when the Satan sees the anointing on you, he coming after you. When Satan sees you fulfilling God's purpose, he coming after you. When Satan sees you getting closer and closer to your destiny, he going to get every demon he can to come after you and fight with you. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Some of the battles you're going through right now is because you're carrying the ball. 
Some of the issues and the pressures you're dealing with on the job, in the home, in the family is because you're carrying the ball. God has called you. He has positioned you. He has given you purpose. He's given you destiny. He's given you this way of fulfilling what he desires you to do. And you're doing it. And because of that, you're in this intensive struggle, but you're going to win. Because you're part of the super church. Now note, as we deal with this struggle, I want to read this from the scripture so we'll see this. As we deal with this struggle, because of the intensity of the football struggle, the football players have to have equipment. Because people are coming after you to take your head off, you got to have a helmet on and shoulder pads, knee pads, because sometimes they'll come against the legs. You got to have equipment. I want to read this to you. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. This is an evil day we live in. This pandemic shows us that we're in the last days and how evil things can be and are, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. You, you've seen the disruptions that's come to our life, to our church, to our families. Uh, this is an evil day. You've seen January 6th last year as those uh, people stormed the Capitol to, to destroy democracy and put a, a president that basically has shown that he supports white supremacy it, it, it back in office and overturned the democratic process. This is an evil day. But it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. And the truth is not just a principle, it's a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So know the truth. In the text, he said, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, Elijah. Then he said, who do you say I am? They said, and only one answered, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He, he is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. Through him, salvation is given. Through him, our lives are secure. Through him, we have a peace that passeth all understanding. That's super peace. Through him, we have a super love, a love that passes all knowledge. What shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Because of his love, we can never be separated from God the Father. We can never be traded off the team or put off the team. Because of his love, we will always be victorious no matter what. And so he says, having your loins girded about the truth and the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod so that your feet can stand. They have special spiked shoes that they wear. Feet shod with the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. We need faith. The breastplate covers our heart. The helmet covers our head because the enemy attacks our mind. He comes against our heart, the issues of our heart. And then the fiery dots of the wicked one. And it comes against our faith. And so we got to have the helmet of salvation. And then the sword of the spirit. Note that it's not your sword. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, the sword now is an offensive weapon so that we can fight against the enemies that come against us. And it's the sword of the spirit. In other words, the more word you have in your heart, the more the spirit has a sword to be able to fight against the enemies that come and you fight with the spirit, your coach, to defeat the enemy. I used to love when I was a child to watch this um, sitcom called Zorro. I mean, Zorro was bad. 
he had a uh, he could handle that sword. He'd be fighting five or six guys at one time, and with his sword, and he was so adept with the sword and we've got to get adept with the word of God. So when fear comes, we pull out the sword. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and a love and a sign sound mind. When struggle comes, we pull out the sword. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. When sickness comes, we pull out the sword. His name is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. With his stripes, I'm healed. When depression comes, he gives the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And we pull out the sword of praise and begin to praise God until the depression spirit gets off of us because we are beloved. We are the super church, but you got to put on your equipment. Imagine a football player going out on the field with no helmet. He going to get a concussion. Imagine him having no shoulder pads. He may get his shoulder dislocated. Some of us are trying to fight, but we don't have on the whole armor of God. You better put on this armor so that you're able to stand against the evil designs of the enemy. That's what um, methods means there when it says against the wiles of the devil is methodia. He has methods that he's coming against us. He looks, he sees ways to penetrate our armor. But when we've got it all full and the breastplate and the helmet and everything on, he can't do it. We're in it to win it and we shall prevail. Let me get back to the metaphor. Here, here are the goals of the, of the football team. The goal of the football team is get to the goal line. Every time they get to the goal line, they score. At the end of the game, the one who has scored the most is the one who wins the game. Here are some of the goals of the church. And this is why the struggle is so hard. First goal is uh, to bring glory to God. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. The psalmist said, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thy name be all glory. In a time where people, the atheists are, are saying there is no God and others are saying that uh, the religious type of institutional church is gone and we don't need that anymore. We stand up and say, no, God set this church in the earth to glorify him, and we will continue meet the goal of glorifying God. Every time we come on streaming, every time we come into the sanctuary on the days that we come into to the sanctuary, we come for the purpose of letting the world know there is a God. He has redeemed us and let the redeemed of the Lord say so because we must glorify and give him the honor, do his name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. When you magnify something, you blow it up beyond proportion. We got to blow God up. When you go to work tomorrow, blow him up. Let people know you saw the Super Bowl, but I got a super God who works with me every day in a supernatural way. You had one day, but I got a life full of super things that are going to happen because I serve a supernatural God who has given me supernatural life and keeps doing supernatural things. We're called to proclaim his word. Jesus is the living word, but we have the Bible, which is the written word. And the world has to know this so that they know clearly and definitively who Jesus is. Who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're Elias and some say when we proclaim the word of God, we speak like Peter and say Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, the redeemer, the savior, the chief cornerstone of his church, the alpha and the omega. The God who created all things according to John. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The message Bible says moved in 
to the neighborhood. As we proclaim the word, people that are in darkness get light. People that are addicted get free. People that are struggling with mental depression and other ills of that nature can get deliverance. We must proclaim the word of God. And in order to proclaim it, we must know it. We must read it. We must study it. We must believe it. And then we must proclaim it because this broken, dark world needs the light and the power of the word of God. That's our goal. And through proclaiming the word, we will win the loss. Those who don't know the Lord will see the sign of the cross, learn about the power of the blood to bring forgiveness and reconcile us back to the owner, the father. That's through the word of God being proclaimed. And as we proclaim it, we win the loss. And then those who we win from darkness into light, we now build and edify as disciples. And then um, we meet human need. Jesus said, when you uh, fed me, when you clothed me, you did well. And I received you and I said, Lord, when did we clothe you? When did we feed you? When did we take care of you? He said, in, in as much has you done it to the least of these. So, so the church is here for the least of these. The least, the lost, and the last. People who have been disenfranchised and feel they have no hope, we meet their need, be it natural or spiritual. Spiritually through the word of God, but naturally through the love of God, making sure that they're eating and that they're clothed and if they're in prison and visiting and helping those who are less fortunate than ourselves because this is our goal and this is why the devil fights us so because every time we win another soul out of darkness his kingdom is denigrated and diminished and then lastly um the uh, fifth goal is to destroy the works of darkness to conquer the kingdom of darkness. And I want us, you to see the three words in the text. Prevail, hell, and gates. Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. First of all, look at prevail. That's the Greek word that means to be strong to another's detriment to overpower. So this is not a passive word where the gates of hell is coming against us. The kingdom of darkness is coming against us. This is a word meaning that we overpower hell. We go after hell or Hades as the Greek term would be. We're not sitting back in four corners or four walls the church building, just having a praise fit. Nothing wrong with that. But after we praise and worship God, we go out to war with the enemy. We go out to break the chains of injustice in our culture. We, we go out and we preach and we pray and we vote and we do everything we can to um, go against all of the darkness that's in this world, whether it be injustice, inequality, whatever it is, we're not passive sitting back. We're crying loud, sparing not, lifting up our voice like a trumpet in Zion, because as the super church with supernatural power, it would be a waste to just keep it in a pew. We got to get out of the pew. We got to get out our seats to the streets and win and bless and heal and restore broken humanity. That's why they call those seats pews. We've been sitting in them so long, they stink. Mm -mm. We got to get out and battle and do all we can to prevail over everything that is against the mind, the heart, and the will of God. And that's why he said, this super team, this super church I'm building shall overpower all darkness. 
And then he says Hades. So prevail against Hades. Hades is a Greek term that means not to see. It means the unseen world. And it's talking about now the kingdom of Satan and the demonic forces that are not seen. And there is no demonic, satanic power that can prevail or overpower the church because the church is empowered to overpower the darkness of Satan. Think of David and Goliath, this big old giant. David's this young man, not even in the army, not a warrior, not a fighter. But he says, this giant can't beat me. I was shepherding my father's sheep and a lion came. It couldn't beat me. A bear came. It couldn't beat me. This giant. And I'm speaking to somebody because you're facing some giants. But the Lord is telling me to tell you, can no giant whip you? Because you've been anointed, because you have the armor of God on, because you're part of the super church, every giant you face will be defeated. We are more than conquerors, Romans 8 says, through Christ Jesus. The gates also represent the council of the ruling body because the elders and the leaders of the city met in the gates and they uh, voted on the council and what would be done in that city and what would be stopped in that city. What it's talking about here is the council that is against us. Whatever that council be, be it a racist council, be it a council to uh, stop our family from being harmonious and healthy and strong. Be it a council that keeps us in crisis after crisis. I believe this pandemic is a council of the enemy. I don't believe God sent it per se. He allowed it, but it is a council because it has disrupt, disrupted and God is the God of peace. But yet in it, God has preserved us. Yet in it, God has provided for us, shown his faithfulness through it. And it reminds me of the scripture in Isaiah 54. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against you shall be utterly condemned. It didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed. It didn't say pandemics wouldn't come. It didn't say pressures wouldn't uh, attack your life. Problems, problem people, problem situations, crises wouldn't come. But it said it may be formed, but it won't prosper. And in other words, at the end, no matter how it's been formed, it will not defeat, diminish, or destroy. It can't because God is with us. He will bring us out with victory every time. And that's why we say the super church. Third, it's the militia because the army armies met in the gates before they went out to fight. Whatever army or attack comes against us, in other words, we will always defeat it. And then lastly, Hades was the Greek word for uh, the abode of the dead, what you would call the grave. Not even death can defeat us. Now, I know there were leaders that passed in the pandemic, went on to be with the Lord. But death to us now, because of Jesus, through his death and resurrection, death is a door. And it takes us into a greater life than anything we can experience on earth. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. We have an incorruptible crown. They're going to get a crown. The, the football team that wins the Super Bowl will get this golden football crown. But what is that in comparison to the crown we have, which is eternal life? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Because we have gotten on this team through the blood of Jesus, not even death 
can touch us. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You don't have to fear anything. You don't have to back up from anything. You don't have to be discouraged over anything. You don't have to let depression uh, be a, so much a part of your life. You are on the super team called the super church. And because of our MVP, most valuable player, his name is Jesus. He lived, he died, he rose from the dead. And now because he is triumphant and all power is in his hand, he can't lose, we can't lose. He can't be defeated, we can't be defeated. He can't be destroyed, we can't be destroyed. God is with us, the owner, the father, the, the, the general manager, the son, the Holy Ghost within us. And because of this, nothing will ever be able to defeat the super church and those who are a part of it. Let me close now. And I'm going to read one scripture in Revelation, the first chapter and the eighth verse. This is John, when he sees Jesus in his glory after his resurrection. And he says, and when I saw him, I fell as at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades and death. And I have the keys. Keys represents authority. And he says, because I have the authority of Hades, all of the things we talked about, the council, the uh, abode of the dead, and the uh, militia, and all of the things that Hades represents and its gates. He says, I got the keys to it. So then nothing that you face that is hellish, that is from the gates of hell, will ever be able to defeat you because I have the authority over it. And so what the text is dealing with, and I'll close with this, the power of death, nor any grave situation, because that's what the grave represents, not just the grave where you're dead, but any grave situation in life. The power of death, nor any grave situation, cannot prevent the advance of the church and the kingdom of God, nor claim victory over us who belong to the Lord because we're on a team that cannot be defeated and that team is called the super church. Now, I want to speak to some of you that may be listening here who haven't fully given your life to Jesus. I want to start there. If you haven't fully given your life to Jesus, you're not on the team. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church, the called out ones. He's calling you today. He's calling you to give him your life. He's calling you to join the team. He's calling you to be a part of a super future, of a super life, and you need to give your life to him today. And all you have to do, according to the scriptures in Romans 8 and, and um, 9, uh, 10 and 9, excuse me, it says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, saved you are, or made right with God you are. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me so that you can become a part of this super team. Super Bowl is one Sunday, but you'll have a super God with you every day of your life from now on. This simple prayer, pray this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. 
forgive me of my sins. Make me a child of God and I'll serve you. In your name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, I want you to text SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to 55444. Um, that's SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to 55444. And we will contact you. We will connect to you and let you know how you can be trained, how you can be mentored, how you can be coached to be a part of this super team called the Super Church. Now I wanna pray for everyone that is still on pertaining to the things that we go through. Football is an intense struggle. I'm not saying that all our struggles are over. I'm just saying we got the victory over the struggles. The struggles may not be over, but we will have victory over our struggles. You're dealing with a family situation, you're dealing with a crisis of some kind or another, whatever it is, I brought this message to let you know your super God has promised you super victory. You're more than a conqueror. Don't be downcast or depressed. Because of Jesus, you can lose. <clears throat> Father, I thank you now for those who are still on, who are listening. We are part of the super church. We have a super love. God so loved the world. You love us with a love that's greater than death. We have a super peace, a peace that passes all understanding. We have super victory. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Would you bless your people? We're all facing something. We're all dealing with something. You can't have victory without a battle. <clears throat> you can't have triumph without coming through a war. At the end of this day, one team will claim the triumph over another. But there will be an intense struggle. As we struggle, give us grace. As we struggle, give us strength. As we struggle, give us power. And let us come out wiser, stronger, and more able and willing to do your will. Bless us as new life to be a strong dream team. To glorify you, proclaim your word. Win those in darkness who are broken and addicted and hurting. Meet human need and then overcome the power of darkness wherever it be injustice racism inequality whatever praying protesting and prevailing until we win we thank you for it now in Jesus' name i pray thank god amen well god bless you saints now it's giving time let's be a blessing to the house of god if the world can spend $7.1 billion betting. How much are you willing to put on a sure thing? Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse and prove me, Malachi 3, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive. This is one of the most important parts of worship. God has given us so much, now we give something back to him. Would you take time now to type and to give that we might be a super church doing supernatural things and fulfilling our super purpose and mission. We are the dream team, but it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And part of that is what we give. There are several ways to give. You'll see the prompts on the screen you can give <clears throat> by cash app dollar sign new life <clears throat> um and why you can give uh through givelify uh, um and you can give uh by uh the online www.newlifeny.org but give 
and whatever you give to make God's dream come true in the earth, God will bless your dream and that's his promise. You can't beat God giving. So follow these prompts on the screen and let's give and let's watch God give a supernatural blessing to us because we honor him with our super faith, love, and adoration. Remember 12 noon prayer? And uh, then that's every day. And then 12 noon Wednesday, 7 in the evening. And then 7.30, we will resume dialogue with Destiny with my guest as we talk about healthy relationships. What does it take for our relationships, whether we're married or whether they're friend relationships or faith-based relationship in the community of faith. What is it that causes relationships to be healthy so that they can bless our life and bless our future? Well, be encouraged, saints. You're part of the super church. And because of this super church, you will never be defeated because of the Christ who established this team in his name. Now, Father, we thank you. Your blessing be upon your people this week. Give us wisdom for every decision, strength for every challenge, and then favor that doors will open, ways will be made, and whatever we face, we will always come out on top with victory because we are the super church. In the name of him who lived and died and rose from the dead, that name is Jesus. I pray now. Thank God. Amen. Well, God bless you. We are victorious as his super church.